Hello, my name is Vicki Emsch. I'm a registered dietitian and AVP of Clinical Operations for Aviana Medical Solutions. I want to thank the Ole Foundation for inviting me to spend some time with you today. And I have a question. Are you ready for the infant transition? If not, I'm so glad that you're attending this session. I do have one disclosure. I am an employee of Aviana Healthcare Medical Solutions, and I've been here for about eight years, but I've been working in home care for close to 17 or 18 years. Prior to that, I was a hospital-based dietitian, and I worked in many different care settings. And here are the objectives for this session. After attending, I hope that you will be able to walk away with more understanding how infant connectors improve patient safety. What is the difference between legacy and infant enteral supplies and which supplies will be impacted by the transition? And understand that it's gonna be important to clean the infant connectors and why this is important. And I know that some of you have heard about infit, learned about infit, perhaps from your, your healthcare team, a dietitian that you work with, maybe another consumer who's on tube feeding, um, maybe even social media. But I thought just so we're all on the same page, let's talk about why, why is infit important? First of all, there unfortunately are some situations where, or some incidents, where a healthcare provider or an individual accidentally connected an enteral supply item like a syringe or a feeding bag to a non-enteral medical line or piece of equipment. They accidentally infuse formula into the wrong, wrong place, into the wrong body part. This contributed to a poor outcome and then sometimes it was actually fatal. To reduce the risk of this happening, an international team of experts came together and they created a unique design for enteral supplies or for tube feeding supplies. This unique design will only allow an enteral piece of equipment or enteral supply to connect to another enteral piece of equipment or supply. This will prevent consumers and caregivers from accidentally infusing tube feeding formula into the wrong medical line or the wrong body part. Now, with these new enteral connectors, there's, there's definitely gonna be some benefits. It's gonna make it difficult, if not impossible, for unrelated medical delivery systems to connect together. It's also going to standardize how enteral supplies are connected across healthcare settings. And this is something that I'm excited about. I can't tell you how many times that I have worked with a patient, a consumer, somebody on a healthcare team, and we're trying to figure out why something will not connect to another thing. Sometimes it's because it's a specific brand of a feeding tube and you have to use a specific type of syringe. That is going to be no longer a problem because the infant connector design will connect to any brand of feeding tube, will connect to any brand of syringe. It is going to make it so much easier going from the hospital to the home and trying to give you the right type of supplies. It's also going to decrease accidental disconnections, reduce those interruptions during feeding. And I know some of you experienced this. You set up your feeding pump, you insert the bag into the feeding tube, you, you, you set run, or you think everything's going great, but you come back later and you realize the formula didn't go into the tube. It actually went onto the floor or went onto the bed. This will really reduce that. No more feeding the bed. So now, you're, so now we know that consumers are going to get the nutrition that they need, but also it's going to reduce laundry. Anytime we can reduce laundry, that's a good thing. So let's take a closer look at the infant design. If you look on the left side of the screen, 
This is a, just a diagram of what a traditional or what we're now calling a legacy tube, what it looks like. There is a step adapter that connects to feeding tubes by inserting straight into that feeding port. You compare it onto the right side of the screen. This is an, your, the infant connector. And instead of inserting straight in, you're gonna use a twisting motion to connect. They look really, really different. And that's on purpose. Here is a close up. These are two NG feeding tubes. On the left side, this is the legacy. Here's that. There's a feed port, there's the med port, and there's a wide opening. That's where that end of that um, stepped adapter would insert directly into that feed port. You compare it to the right, and you can see this is the infit connectors. And you can look at that, um, that feed port, and you can see that there is, I like to, I re like to refer to it as a stem. There's a, almost like a stem in the middle of the port. They look really, really different. So that is the, that is the true difference um, between legacy and infit. This is how they, that's the difference in how they look. Here is a photo of legacy versus infit and how the syringe is connecting to the feeding tube. Again, on the left side of the screen is a legacy connection. Here's that 60 mil cat tip syringe. It's inserting directly into that, in that feed port. I'm sure many of you done this many, many times. If you look on the right side, you can see how a 60 mil infit syringe is going to connect to an infit feeding tube. It's, it's going to twist in there. So you can see that the connection looks really different. Now let's, talking, let's, not, let's talk more about the, the transition. So the infant tra transition is really picking up speed. Now, when I look back, I remember 2015. I remember learning about infit and thinking, wow, this is going to be really great. You know, it's going to improve patient safety, but it's going to be a big change. So we need to start educating our, our internal team. We need to start you know, working with patients so they understand the change. Again, this was in 2015. There was some roadblocks to converting over to, to infit. But the supply manufacturers, like the pump manufacturers, they really got on the infit bandwagon right from the get-go and they redesigned their feeding bags to connect to the infit tubes. But they knew that it was early in the transition, it was going to take the hospitals a while to convert over to infit, so they added a white transitional adapter to the end of each pump and gravity feeding bag. They've been doing this since 2015. Now, this transitional adapter was only a temporary solution. We thought it would be just for a couple of years, but now it's the summer of 2022, so seven years down the road, that transitional adapter is still on those feeding bags, but change is coming. This summer, both the pump and gravity bags for both of the two major pump manufacturers, they are going to stop adding that transitional adapter. Also, some of the legacy tubes, feeding tubes, are also going to be discontinued. But let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look at the infant U.S. conversion rates. All this, this picture here shows you some of the top hospitals across the country. Here's the best children's hospitals, the top 25 children's hospitals for GI and GI surgery, the top 20, 25 hospitals for neonatology, and the top 25 adult hospitals for GI and GI surgery. You can see from this graph here that the, the vast majority of them have either converted over to infit or they're in the process of converting over to infit. So with this transition, which enteral supplies are going to be changing? Well, pump and gravity feeding bags are going to be changing now. In fact, some of you may actually have 
feeding bags or pump bags in your home that no longer have that white transitional adapter. G tubes, J tubes, and NG tubes will be transitioning over to have that infant connection. They're going to have those connectors for their med port and their feed port. You may actually have an infant tube right now. Now, one thing I want to make really clear is that the low profile gastrostomy tubes, or what we like to call buttons, the design of that tube is not changing. Instead, it's going to be the extension set that will have that infit connector design. So the med port and the feed port and on those extension sets, that is actually what is changing. To go along with the change within, with the feeding tubes, the syringes are changing, so we will have infit syringes, um, feral valve relief bags, enteral drainage bags. In fact, many of the enteral drainage bags right now have, are already infit compatible. And then also some of the accessories as well, like the Lopez valve. If you use a Lopez valve, it will also come with that infit connector design. So this is, these are all of the enteral supplies that are going to be changing. Let's take a closer look at the Moog Infinity feeding bags. Here's, a, here's some close-up pictures will really illustrate what has happened or what will happen very soon. On the left side, this is a picture of a 500 mil Moog pump bag. You can see there is that white transitional adapter that is, that is on the end of that tubing. Now, if you compare it to the picture on the right, this is what that feeding bag is gonna look like now. There's gonna be no white transitional adapter. Instead, at the end, there is gonna be a, a purple piece that you're gonna twist in to your feeding tube. With the Moog Infinity feeding bags, they are actually changing the item code number. So the bags that have the white transitional adapter, they're an INFO 500-A. That just tells me that the transitional adapter is, is still connected to this feeding bag. Now, if you compare it to the one that doesn't have the transitional adapter, it's INF0500-E. You may see that listed on your case of, of feeding bags, and that is one way that you'll be able to tell, does my feeding bag have a transitional adapter or it doesn't? So that's just a little helpful hint there. Now if we go to the kangaroo jelly bags, you can see basically the same thing. So with the kangaroo joey, here's a picture of their feeding bag with that white transitional adapter on the left, comparing it to on the right. So they look identical, except there's no white transitional adapter. The item code numbers for the joey feeding bags, they're not changing. Instead, what they have done, they've put a sticker on the outside of the case and the sticker says, this product does, does not contain that transitional adapter. So that's what you really want to be looking for. If you see that yellow sticker and it says, this product does not contain that transitional adapter, um, it will not be in um, any of those feeding bags. Let's take a look at the infit transition schedule. We're going to start out with the Infinity pump bags, the 500 mil bags. They have already transitioned over, so they, do, they no longer can have that white transitional adapter attached. Many of you, if you're using that 500 mil bag at, in the home, you've already received these. The next bag, or the next size that's going to transition over is that 1200 mil bag. We're anticipating that to transition sometime in mid-August. So it really depends on your home care. If your home care orders directly from the manufacturer, you might see it a little bit earlier compared to a home care that may get their feeding bags from a large distributor. 
the infinity gravity bags, they're going to be a little later, probably more like late September, early, um, early October. Now for the kangaroo joey pump bags, all of the feeding bags are going to be transitioning at the same time. The 500 mil, the 1000 mil, the feed and flush, and we should start seeing those very, very soon. Again, anywhere from mid-August to late August. And also Cardinal, who makes the kangaroo NG tubes and G tubes, they have decided that they are going to discontinue making legacy tubes. So we should see that also in August or early September. You will no longer be able to find a legacy NG tube or G tube. So I know some of you will have some questions like, well, how will this impact me? What if I have a legacy feeding tube? What am I going to do? So here's like on the, if you take a look on the right side of the screen, this is a picture of that transitional adapter. If you have a legacy tube, like if you have a legacy G tube, a J tube, your home care company will be able to provide you with a transitional adapter that you can easily twist on to the end of your pump feeding bag and it will look just like normal. You can insert it into the opening of your uh, feed port and you should be good to go. Now, for your if you have a low profile gastrostomy tube or button, what a lot of home care companies are doing they are providing you with infit extension sets. Remember, the button is design is not changing. What is changing is those that is the extension sets. So it makes perfect sense if you have a button that you can use your infit extension sets. You will be able to connect to that feeding bag that no longer has that transitional adapter. And once you have those syringes, those infit syringes as well you should be good to go. So that's what a lot of home care companies are doing. Now, one thing I, I just wanna um, bring up is the transitional adapter is only a temporary solution. We know, because we've heard this, the home, the home care community, we've heard this from the manufacturers that they're still gonna continue to produce the transitional adapter but they just don't know how long it's gonna stay in the supply chain. We're expecting it to be for at least through the rest of the year, but if you have a legacy feeding tube, now is that perfect time to ha start having that conversation with your healthcare team about maybe it's time that I need to convert over to a infit tube. So start having that conversation. Again, some other questions about how this may impact you in the home. In the beginning of this transition, your home care might uh, give you a combination of legacy and infant supplies. Now, if you receive infant syringes and you have a legacy tube, and you may you may don't you may panic. Well, don't because if those infant syringes can be used with the legacy tube if you have that white transitional adapter. That white transitional adapter can be twist onto the end of that infant syringe. And you can see from this picture over here, it can easily, it can easily be inserted into the opening of that feed port. So that, that, that is a solution. If you do get infant syringes, you can use that you can use that white transitional adapter to make it work with the legacy tube. Here is just, I just wanna take a one more close up look at the difference between the infant design and the legacy design. This is a picture of two extension sets. Just like those, just like those infant, um, just like those NG tubes that I showed you earlier, it looks almost identical. On the left side, this is a legacy extension set, and you can see that nice wide open port right there versus 
the infant. And you can see there's that stem, and there is also a space in that, in that, um, around that stem. That space is what we're referring to as a moat. Okay, remember that. Because now we're going to talk about why it's important to clean your med port and your feed port with your infant tubes and extension sets. This space or that moat, that's where formula and medication can accumulate. And if you don't clean out your fed, feed port, your med port on a daily basis, that formula and medication can build up, can get all dry, crusty, you know, it's not good from a bacterial standpoint, but also it can lead to difficulty connecting. You can just imagine if there's some dried up formula and you are trying to insert the end of a, the, that tip of that feeding bag or a syringe, you may actually have to give it a lot of extra force or pressure. Sometimes this can actually damage that those ports, can actually damage that feeding tube or extension set. What we recommend is to use a clean toothbrush to clean out that feed and that med port at least once a day. You want to wet that um, toothbrush with water. You want to get in there and you really kind of want to scrub it around. Rinse out your toothbrush. You want to do it, you know, do it again. And then you can take a syringe and actually squirt in some water to make sure you get rid of all the debris. There's actually an infant brush that, that can also be helpful. You're really going to have to ask your home care company if they provide that. A little bit more about cleaning um, infant tubes and extension sets. The extension set ports, just like with a you know, feeding tube, they can be cleaned using a toothbrush. But also, I think it's really nice to take that infant syringe, fill it with water, and make sure that you flush out that infant extension set to make sure you get all of that, the, the residual formula out of there. It's really important to maintain the life of your extension set to make sure that you, you clean them after every single use. And a, another tip is to avoid priming the formula to the end of the pump or gravity feeding bag. This can lead to a buildup of formula in the moat. You know, when you, pri when you first prime your formula through your pump bag or your gravity bag, sometimes formula will drip out and the little drips can get into that moat. So be a little careful about that. And also, there is a great organization called stayconnected.org. They have some really great resources on how to clean your infant tubes, how to clean the infant extension sets. There, there's a step-by-step -step, um, handout, goes to all of the steps that you need to take. I put in a couple of links here, but this will be really helpful for you. Now practice changes at home. This is, this, is, this is a change. And you know, it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get used to things, just like anything, just like any change. But I think the most important one to, to really incorporate is cleaning the med and the feed ports. Make that part of your normal routine. It's only gonna take a few more minutes each day. But it's so important because it's going to make sure that your, your ports stay clean. There's going to be a decreased risk of bacterial contamination. Plus, it's going to lead to a better connection. And remember, do not over tighten. This may lead to damaging the feeding tube or the extension sets. And this last tip is not just for infant, but if you are using a home blenderized formula, invest in a high quality blender and strain any of those fibrous materials before infusing the blends. This will really help prevent the clogging of infant connectors. 
And like with any change, preparation is key. So anticipate the change. Your supplies may look different. And it may actually take a few days to adjust to using the infant supplies, but be patient. Because if you're patient and give it some time, you're really going to love this connection. It's, it's so secure. Um, it, it, it's really snug. It's going to reduce all of those accidental disconnections. But if you have questions about infant supplies, begin having those conversations, those discussions now with your healthcare team and your home care company. If you do have a legacy feeding tube, now is the time to consider getting it changed over to an infant feeding tube. And I do have to say one thing, I do wanna mention one thing about um, medication syringes. From a home care standpoint, insurance reimburses the home care, um, home care companies for the syringes that are used to administer to feeding formula. However, they do not reimburse or do, they do not cover the medication, the smallest syringes that are used to administer medications. Because they're assuming that you're getting those medication syringes from your pharmacist or the pharmacy that you work with. If you use a lot of medication syringes, again, now is that perfect time to start having those conversations with your pharmacist. If you don't even if you don't know where to start, there I'm including a link to this handout that helps guide you on what kind of kind of conversation you should be having with your pharmacist. Let them know that you know you are you use these syringes to administer medications into a feeding tube, and that the type of connections have changed and you need a very specific type of syringe. You can provide them this handout. Begin having those conversations now with your pharmacist. And I do wanna close with some, some comments that we've gotten from some intro consumers across the country. This connection feels secure. I never had one break or leak and my toddler can't unscrew it. And you know those toddlers can be ingenious. So that definitely is a benefit. It's so much easier to use InFit rather than those other adapters, which are often taken off and I can't find them. They get lost. And I actually love that the connection, I love the connection, it would not come apart on its own and we are no longer had to worry about the med port accidentally popping open and making a mess. And that definitely is a benefit. I wanna leave you with some infant resources. As I mentioned earlier, stayconnected.org is a great place to find more information about infant, the history of infant, the why of infant, why it's important but also they have some really great resources on how to clean your infant feeding tube and your infant extension set. I'm also including some links to um, Moog Medical, which makes the Infinity Pump, and Cardinal Health, which makes the Joey Pump. They both have some excellent resources to, to help answer some of those infant questions you may have. <music>